welcome to week four of distance learning. As we found out over the weekend, we are gonna be keeping the schools closed until the end of the year. And I wanted to let you guys know that I really, really miss you. Thank you for all the pictures and videos that you've been sending me, it makes my day. And I want to reassure you that I will still be posting some really fun art lessons for us, both in Schoology as well as here on my YouTube channel. Throughout the rest of the month of April, I do want to continue to do Spirit Weeks. So this week's Spirit Week is going to be Silly Sock Day. So let's see you rocking your favorite silly socks. This week's lessons are all about how to make abstract art. I'll be showing you how to make artworks just like these throughout these videos. So let's go ahead and jump on in. This lesson is about the Russian artist Vasily Kandinsky. Kandinsky always had a great love for two things, color and music. When he was a child, he learned to play the piano and the cello, but despite his musical talents, he went to school to study law. It wasn't until he was in his early 30s when he began to create art. But his art looked different than the traditional art that artists had been painting before him. His art didn't look like theirs at all. His art was abstract. Abstract art does not attempt to look like real life. Instead, it focuses on the elements of art, like shape, color, and texture. Kandinsky had a rare condition called synesthesia, which is where he saw colors when he listened to music, and he believed that certain sounds each had their own color. He loved the idea that listening to music could make you feel many different emotions and it could tell a story without actually saying words. He wanted to recreate what he saw in his head through his paintings. Kandinsky is believed to be one of the founders of the abstract art movement, and we call his art abstract expressionism. While none of Kandinsky's artwork was super realistic or it looked like real life, it was all abstract. Some of his paintings were even non-objective. This is a type of abstract art that goes a step further. In non-objective artwork, there is no recognizable subject matter. This means that there is nothing that we can easily identify, like people, places, things, or objects. Instead, it just focuses on shape and color. Here in this example, we can see the realistic artwork is of sunflowers. We can easily tell what that is. The abstract art is also of flowers, but it doesn't quite look realistic. And in the non-objective artwork, we cannot tell what that's supposed to be. All we can see is different shapes, color, texture, and a focus on the seven elements of art. Looking at these two artworks made by Kandinsky, we can tell that they are both abstract artworks, but one of them goes a step further and becomes non-objective. The one that goes a step further and becomes non-objective is Deepened Impulse. This is the picture with the different sized and colored circles. We do not know what that's supposed to look like. Instead, we can just tell that it has a bunch of different shapes, which are circles and colors. However, in the winter landscape, I can tell what that is. I can tell it is a landscape and it's done in the winter time. There's snow on the ground and there are trees without leaves on them. But it doesn't quite look realistic because there's different colors used than what we would see in real life, such as the colors in the snow and in the sky. This lesson is about making non-objective artwork inspired by Kandinsky. You're gonna need your choice of materials and I'm gonna be choosing a couple of different things for mine. You can pick anything that you would like. I'm choosing these watercolors and markers, paints, crayons and oil pastels, color pencils. I'm gonna need some paint brushes and water for my painting as well as a towel, as well as some Sharpies and a piece of paper to make my art on. And just like Kandinsky, I'm going to listen to some music while I work to be inspired by what I hear for my artwork. Don't forget to have a messy mat underneath your paper to make sure your space stays clean while you work. I began listening to the song of my choice, and as I was listening to the song, I used different materials to map out different lines and shapes that I thought would match to the feeling of the music. I thought about the feeling that the music was giving me to influence the different types of designs that I made as well as what color I used, and if the music was going slow, I chose to draw a little slower, versus if it was going fast, I went faster. I wasn't overthinking the different lines and shapes that I was making. I was just having fun letting myself make marks as I was listening to the music. I wasn't overthinking where I should put things or what color I should use. Once all the outlining was done, then I got to come in with all of my different materials and begin my coloring. I chose to put the song on repeat throughout this process so I could hear the song again and again to continue to inspire what different colors I used. 
I also played with the different materials and used different techniques like blending my watercolors together and even added salt to some parts of my watercolor to create more texture in my artwork. After I finished filling in all the spaces, I then decided to let my artwork dry for a little bit and I came back in once it was dry with more materials and I began to layer in more color and shapes. And like I mentioned earlier, abstract art focuses a lot on the seven elements of art. Here is how I use the seven elements in my artwork. To begin with line, I can see that I use some thick lines, I use some wiggly lines, as well as some swirly lines, and some parallel lines. For shape, I can see I use a couple of different shapes like triangles, circles, rectangles, and even some organic shapes like these here. Form is three-dimensional shapes, and since my artwork is 2D, I didn't have a whole lot except for here where I shaded these circles to look like they were spheres. For space, I used both negative space, which is where I have just color, and positive space where I used my different shapes. I used texture in my artwork where I have these water spots, as well as where I use salt, and where I layered on some different color pencils and crayons to make a scratchier texture and a smooth texture using my oil pastels. I used value in my artwork, the lightness and the darkness of a color in multiple spots where I use different tints and shades like the darker and lighter blues. And finally, I definitely used lots of color in my picture, including using different color families such as the warm colors and the cool colors.